Saturday the 2nd of March 1974 and straight away a dedication to Mr and Mrs Cropper and family uh, in class sec A2 that looks like in Birkenhead Tech and also to Karen and Gail and all the girls in Timothy White's in Grange Road in Birkenhead and Dale and Beryl and the kids and that comes from Elaine Cropper. <laughs> In Smart Circus this morning, we have a special feature on Linda Lewis, a long interview and lots of tracks from her album. That's coming up in a few records' time, so Linda Lewis fans, stay tuned. On 202 NVHF, it's Radio Side. And as I said this morning, we have a feature on Linda Lewis at Lark Lady, and uh, the feature has been compiled and presented by ah, that hairy Scotsman from Manchester, Michael Riddock. <laughs> Lions overseas, you must often as you trot have wearied not to be abroad. The remarkable and I think unique voice, an overused word, but I think in this case a true word, of Linda Lewis. Oh. Welcome, Linda. Hello. <laughs> With a, a little bit of a little song called Little Indians, right. which from the Lark album, and you, you attribute this to Robert Louis Stevenson. And I know some of Stevenson's works, but I don't know that one. Tell, tell me about this. Well, he wrote um, a book, I think it was when he was in hospital or something, when he was an old man, and he remembered his childhood. And he wrote this book called Back to Childhood, and it's about poems about stepping in puddles and things, and all yeah. the kind of things you do when you're a kid. And that was one of the poems that I kind of hooked onto because um, I like the words, you know. I mm. like singing them, and I like the idea of it, you know. Having to say, wouldn't you like to be like me, you know. <laughs> and it, it says in your biographies, Linda Lewis, born in the East End. Now, I mean, that conjures up lots of images. What, what was your, char your childhood like? Well, um, it was a bit rough. <laughs> Because, a bit rough. Yes, because, um, you know, my mum had to kind of bring us up most of the time because my dad was off out places and things. Yeah. <laughs> and there weren't many kind of coloured families in that area. Um, my family is like half and half. It's like half West Indian and half English. Mm -hmm. And there are a few of them. And so I was always into fights about, you know, that, that thing about me being black and everything. But um, that seemed to kind of die away as I got older. It, it got better as you got older? Yeah, well, you know what That's kids it, yeah. are. They're, like, very insulting, aren't they? They yeah. tell you right out what yeah, yeah. it's all about instead of just keeping it inside. So, you know, now and again I get a funny look from someone, but it doesn't bother me. So do you, do you look back on your childhood with, with pleasure or, or with pain? Um, both, really. I remember lots of good times, and I remember... I think I remember it mostly with pleasure. Did you sing as a kid? Did you sort of leap around singing then? Yeah, I used to sing. Um, when we used to go out shopping, you know, they'd all say, come on, give us a song then, and they'd stand me up on the counter, and I'd sing the latest kind of pop song. And um, I was really uninhibited then. And, I mean, I could just burst into song all the time, you know. Mm. But now I kind of think about it, you know, I think. I can't just walk along the street and just <laughs> shouting out and singing and that. But then I could, you know. Well, was it a... a, a sort of dream of yours to be a professional singer then? Or did, did, did it cross your mind? No, I wanted to be a film star. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I think we all did, you know. I wanted to be um, Ginger Rogers or something. You know? Yeah. Um, but I, I love music. I, I, we only had a radiogram and we had about three records. I remember what were they? One. It was Nat King Cole. Uh -huh. I think it was when, when I Fall in Love. Um, the Platters. Oh, The Great Pretender. Only hmm? you. Only you. Only you. Yeah. And something else, I can't remember <laughs> what it is. But we listened to the radio, so we heard all the pop songs, so I never heard anything else but, you know, like the popular songs of the time. And um, I went to stage school for about two years. Well, I was about seven. My mother was, she wanted me to be singing. She heard me singing, you see. And she, when she was young, she used to sing as well. Mm. But she didn't have the opportunity because, um, you know, when you're 16, you have to go out 
work in the yeah. factory or whatever it is, you know. And I remember she told me that she ran off with a band leader once. <laughs> no, like, important band, but she yeah. was going to join the band. And my grandfather kind of threatened the man with a knife and said, don't ever come near my daughter again. <laughs> so she kind of put her hopes and dreams into me, I suppose. I wasn't really interested. I just did it for a laugh. And when you, when you were singing around, you, you sang for a, a while with a, a remarkably named group called Herbie Goins and the Night Timers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, he came from America and he was um, a tall, lanky thing. He looked like one of the Harlem Globetrotters. And he used to jump in the audience and do a kind of thing on the floor. I don't know what it was. He <laughs> kind of died on the floor while he was singing. Yeah. And it was a soul review, you know, we'd have dancers and things. And I'd come out halfway through the show and do like three songs in my evening gown and my hair up. And I was very sophisticated. This was sort of real cabaret stuff, was it, in a way? No, cabaret we did like song. dirty old dumpy clubs, but, you know, it's just the way we put it out. You mm. know? We just kind of pretended that we were something special. Mm. It was great fun. Now, biographies put out by record companies are something you look at and, and you know, you think to yourself, because sometimes there are true things there and sometimes there are yeah, slightly okay. untrue things. It, it's uh, this one, for example, which I've got in front of me, it says, aged 14, visited the club to see John Lee Hooker and ended up joining him on stage. Do you remember that? I went to see John Lee Hooker when I was about 14 in South End, the local seaside resort, and I asked him, could I sing, you know? with his band. I didn't actually join him, I sang with his band. Mm. And that was your introduction to, to well, being semi, I mean, yeah, it's been semi to the people who have helped me since then, yeah, because he said, after he said, well, you know, I have to uh, introduce you to some people. And uh, he, he was, his management at the time was Don Arden Agency, who managed the small faces. Yeah. And he, the offices were in Carnaby Street, and I thought, Carnaby Street? God, that's where it all happens. <laughs> so when he said, come there, I thought, wow, I can't miss this chance. So I went along there, and they kind of signed me up, you know. And um, I told them I was 16. They didn't know I was only 14. <laughs> so, you know, it was all a bit illegal. You were still at school as well, were you? Yeah, I was still yeah. at school. And um, they didn't really do anything for me, but one guy who worked there, Ian Samwell, who wrote the first English rock and roll record, I have to tell you, move it. <laughs> he um, he had a lot of interest in me, and uh, he kept his interest, you know, until my first album. He made my first album. Well, I And there's a track from Fathoms Deep by Linda Lewis, that's called Wise Eyes, brings to an end our feature, compiled by Mike Riddick of BBC Radio Manchester, butts for sure. Remember this golden classic, Brian's Mod, wonderful radio Merseyside.